What's good, YouTube? I'm E. Smith, and I'm back with another video. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome to Mellow Talk. This is a safe space I created for us to come together, talk about various opinions, viewpoints, and perspectives about true crime stories and trending topics, all right? Now, there's only one rule to the channel that as we discuss our difference of opinion, that we remain respectful. I do not want my platform to be a platform where people come to spew hate to one another. This is a no hate zone. So, I wanna thank you for being here, cause fact of the matter is, you could be anywhere in the world, but you right here with me, chopping it up, and I'm digging that. So since I have you here, go ahead and take this time, give me a thumbs up, like this video, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell. That way when I drop new content, you'll be the first to get it. I need to get to my first 1K subscribers as quick as possible. I need your help getting it done, and we got a lot of dope content on the way. Now, before I get started with today's story, I just want to make it clear that everything that I post and that I put on this channel is for educational and informational purposes only. This is research that I've done online, watching court proceedings, reading articles, etc. and compiled this information into a video to share with you guys. All right. Now, last time we talked about Boosie and his Breakfast Club interview regarding the LGBT community. And I couldn't help but think about this story right here. So, this is going to be the story of Mr. Devin Robinson. Is Devin or Devon? I'm not really sure which way his name is supposed to be pronounced. But I'm going to say Devin and I might say Devon sometimes. But Mr. Devin Robinson, this is out of Detroit, right? Crazy, crazy story, right? Now, back in May of 2019, there was a group of people who were having a kickback or a house party, right? We, we, it's late, it's late slash early in the morning, like 2.30 2 in the morning. Everybody's chilling, everybody's been drinking, and now it's time to take a trip to the gas station, right? So going to the gas station, we have a guy named Blair Keys. We have Paris Cameron, which is the transgender woman. We have Alante Davis, and we have Timothy Blanchard. All of these guys, they and girl, excuse me, they get in the car, drive down to the gas station, which is walking distance from where they are. And Blair Keys testified in court that they were on the side of Detroit that they did not feel safe even walking walking distance to the store. Therefore, they drove to the store. Check out this surveillance footage of Paris Cameron and Alante Davis. What's happening now? Paris is thinking about getting his attention. So, as you can see in the footage, Paris Cameron is interested in what she likes, what she sees. Okay? She's holding on to her friend like, woo, who is that? Of course, there's no audio in the video, but the video pretty much speaks for itself, all right? So she's flirting. She's looking at him. She's walking back and forth. She's holding on to her friend, and she's discussing inviting him back to the house to the party, okay? Now, again, this is a random guy. She does not know him, doesn't know anything about him, but she sees him and is interested, so she flirts, okay? Then check out this footage of them outside of the gas station. And that's now? me trying to tell that's me trying to tell Paris to get back in the car. What is she doing? Trying to get Devon's attention while I'm telling her to get back in the car. So as you can see in this footage, Paris Cameron is adamant about getting this man's attention, okay? So she's at the car, she gets out the car, she walks his direction. Now Mr. Robinson is in an alley, like a dark alley next to the gas station. She walks his direction and she gives him the address to the party, according to Blair, okay? 
okay Blair is the one that is testifying this is his car he actually drove them to the gas station okay so actually while she's walking towards him Blair says that he is yelling to her hey get back in the car get back in the car she was like I'm gonna go give him this address because I want him to come to the party so she walks towards him she gives him the address and she goes back to the car and they pull out now as they pull out they park and they pause for a second because Blair could not find his wallet okay so he's scrambling he's looking for his wallet he can't find it he you know circled around a couple times to figure out what he was gonna do finally he went to the house okay so when he drives to the house he sees Devin Robinson approaching the home okay so and he's coming from a different direction not from the way of the gas station he's coming from a different direction okay so Paris she hops out like oh you decided to come oh you you came you know she's surprised because again she doesn't know if this man is with what she's with but he came so she takes him in the house and they go upstairs okay now at this time Alante Davis as well as Timothy Blanchard they exit the vehicle and they go inside the home as well the owner of the home is a guy named Lance. He came out of the house and got into the car with Blair. Blair is still in the car scrambling looking for his wallet. He's upset because he didn't know he doesn't know where his wallet is. He doesn't know if he should continue to look for it or if he should just call it a loss or whatever. Okay. He says so at this point he rolls something up, he put something in the air to calm his nerves because he's upset. Alright. So during this time the, the guy who owns the home that they're having the party at, his name is Lance. He comes out, he gets in the car with Blair, and at some point he touches Blair inappropriately or in a way that Blair is not okay with. Blair gets out of the vehicle, he goes into the house. Oh, and I don't want to forget that while Lance and Blair were in the car, you know, Blair may mention to him that, you know, they got this guy, this random guy from a gas station, and he wasn't really cool with it. He testified in court that he didn't get too upset because he was one of those people that was just like, okay, that has nothing to do with me. That's y'all. If y'all want to have a random guy from a gas station, then cool. But I don't feel like you guys should have done that because, again, we don't know anything about him. So, Blair enters the house, okay? When he enters the house, he sees Paris, he sees Alante, and he sees Tim. They're giggly, they're walking around laughing, smiling, and giddy, like they're happy about something. So Blair asked him, like, what's up, what's, you know, what's going on with y'all? And they basically told him, like, he's down, he's down to play, blah, blah, blah. Blair doesn't see him because he's upstairs by himself at this time. So now, he's upstairs by himself, everybody else is downstairs. So then Blair testifies that at this time they all walk up the stairs, okay? And when they go up there, Paris asks him, hey, so do you want to, you know, perform fellatio on him? Would you, you want to do it? And Blair said he was drunk and he was going to do it. He said he was. And they had left him in the room with Devin Robinson by himself. And he said while he was in the room with him, something was off about him. He was very adamant about that. He said something about him just, it was weird. He said, and he asked me, why are you not sucking? And he said he pretty much told him, hey, I'm the same type of person as you. And if you're not sucking, I'm not sucking. And he walked out of the room, basically, right? So that was that. <laughs> I know that's right, Blair. But anyway, so at this point, Paris, Alante, and Timothy take him into a different bedroom, like the master bedroom. They, uh, Blair was alone with him, like in a smaller room, and there was the master bedroom. So they took him into that bedroom, okay? Blair said he went back downstairs. At this point, he knows something is going on up there, but he's not actually up there. So then he goes back up the stairs. He goes into the room to find Timothy. Alante, Paris, and another guy named Armand Matthews all in one room performing fellatio on Mr. Devin Robinson. Yes, four people. He getting top from four people. 
You feel me? Dude, gotta be in heaven at this point. I don't know. But look, they said that while that was going on, he was just chilling the whole time. No emotion from him. No nothing. And you know when you get in the top, you know how you know how it makes you act. But apparently he did not he did not show any type of emotion. And so uh, the owner of the home, Lance, he comes upstairs. Now at this point, obviously the lights are off. Lance turns the light on and sees what everybody is doing. He turns the light off. He joins in. So now not only four people giving you top, five people giving you top. What well, am? So according to Blair, now the room is starting to smell like he didn't even say it, but you know, however it smelled, it was gross, all right? So he said, he left, he went back downstairs. So as he's going downstairs, there's a guy there that he doesn't really get along with. His name is Brendan Suttles. Now Brendan Suttles is going up the stairs as Blair is coming down the stairs. Now Armand Matthews is upstairs participating in the fellatio with the rest of the guys, right? Now, Brendan and Armand are a thing. I don't know if they're necessarily together, but they have some type of dealing with each other. So, Blair says that he hears Brendan and Armand arguing from downstairs. So, he doesn't, but he's not sure if he got caught or what the situation is. He just knows that there was an argument between them. So, he goes back up the stairs, and I guess at this point, uh, Paris and Timothy, I guess they have done whatever they're they're done with it. But Lance, the owner of the house, is still alone with Devin Robinson in this room. So at this point, I guess they're finished with whatever they're doing. And Paris, I'm sorry, not Paris. Blair says that Lance seems to be bothered or he looks down. He doesn't know if maybe he's shameful because you know when you do something sexual that you really don't want to do or that you really don't mean to do or you feel bad after doing it you know how it makes you feel like yeah so yeah apparently Lance was looking really down about something so Blair said he stayed with them he checked on him to see if he was good and so Devin Robinson they said he finally spoke he hadn't said anything all night and he finally spoke and said man I came three times you know and when he said that, he got dressed and he walked out the room and went downstairs. Now, Blair and Lance are still in this room alone. He's making sure Lance is good. Lance said he wanted the door closed while he continued to get dressed. He seemed down about it, but he made sure he was good and he left the room. Now, as Blair walks back downstairs after leaving Lance, he sees Paris and Mr. Robinson exchanging numbers, okay? They, there was also testimony stating that he was asking Paris for money. Now, they didn't talk a lot about that, but they did say that Mr. Robinson was asking Paris for money. And they also mentioned that Paris hid her purse. So she was acting like she lost it, but she really didn't. So I don't know if maybe she told him she would pay him for something or what, why he would be asking her for money. I'm not sure, but there was testimony about that. Now... As he sees them exchanging numbers, you got um, Brendan and Armand. They're still arguing, okay? Now, they're downstairs arguing. Now, shortly after they're done or arguing, Blair and Brendan get into an argument because apparently they just don't like each other. Timothy, Alante, and Paris, they're over there laughing. Apparently have told Blair that Brendan wanted to fight him. So, an argument ensues between Brendan and Blair. Now, at this point... Brendan is pissed and he's ready to go. So Lance drives Brendan home. Okay. So now Brendan and Lance have left. And at this point, Blair and Armand are still in the home. Tim, Paris, and Alante decide that they're going to go back to the gas station and look for Blair's wallet. So they took his car and they went back to the gas station to look for the wallet. Okay. Now, they came back with the wallet, so they found it, okay? And so they sat in the house, 
they were just chilling, talking about everything that happened. So you got, uh, when they come back, you have, you know, Paris, Tim, Alante, Armand, Blair. They're all in the house. They're just talking about everything that went down, you know, laughing, talking about it and everything. And then at some point they hear footsteps. They think it's Lance returning to the home, but then they hear pops. They, they said it's, you know, it is the end of May. It's close to July. They didn't think anything of it because it wasn't super loud. But they said, then a guy with a ski mask in all black enters the house firing. He's shooting upon entering. Pop, 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 pop. So he, he had it out to murder everything moving in there. Okay. So Alante Davis gets shot. Blair says he went into a shock, so he just kind of paused there for a second. But he saw his eyes, and he knew that it was the guy who had just left the party. So he said he ran into the bathroom. He ran into the bathroom. He heard shooting, and he heard screaming. Paris was screaming, just heard a bunch of commotion. He heard the door close as the suspect left. Now, he comes out. He sees Paris laying there. She's been shot. Alante Davis has been shot. He checks Alante's pulse. No pulse. Alante is gone. Paris is still breathing. He is trying to help her. He calls 911. As he calls 911, he heads down to the basement because apparently Armand ran to the basement. I know he wounded two other people, so I don't know if I don't know who those other two people were though. But he goes into the basement. Armand is down there with Tim. Tim has been shot as well. Okay. So he gets up. He goes back upstairs because Armand is with Tim. So he goes back upstairs to make sure Paris is okay. All of this time he's on the phone 911. They're asking him all these questions. He's crying. He's crying hysterically. And it's just chaos going on. He said he heard, when he was in the bathroom, he said he heard blood seeping through the wall. Like it was just a massacre in there. And so, um, long story short, you know, all three of those people passed away. So Paris Cameron passed away. Timothy Blanchard passed away. Alante Davis passed away immediately. And... It just ends in a tragic night. Lance and Brendan are gone. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, they finally come back. Now again, Devin Robinson didn't even leave. They were at the gas station at around 2.40, almost 3 o'clock in the morning. All of this stuff transpired. When Devin Robinson left the house, it was 5 in the morning. Okay. Brendan and Lance have left to take Brendan home but Lance was so drunk he couldn't even drive Brendan all the way Brendan had to drive himself and then he had to bring Lance back home because Lance was just dead to the world's sleep so they come back police everywhere crime scene crazy crazy you feel me and this guys this is what we mean when we talk about men who are not comfortable with themselves. Nobody made that man come to that party. There was even surveillance footage of him back at the gas station dry even and throwing up like he's disgusted by what he has just allowed to happen, obviously. Um, so his thing is, okay, before somebody finds out about this, I'm gonna go kill everybody. And he went to go do that. He didn't kill everybody, but he definitely went to go do that. Listen, to my fellas out there who are in the LGBT community, you know, I say this all the time. I feel like the same way men are with, you know, women, they are with each other. Men like to be sexual. They like to have sex. So it's not always like with women, you know, women are like, oh, I want to meet you. I want to get to know you. I want to, with men, it's just not like that. You know, when they want something, they want it and they're going to get it. They don't care where, we don't, we don't care where we at. And there are some women like that too. No, no, no hate, no discrimination, no nothing like that. But I know I got plenty of friends, you feel me? And I know you see a guy who appears to be straight, 
you know, it's like a turn on and a thrill for you guys. But man, these guys leave those guys where they are. It's not worth it for a few moments of him letting you do do whatever you you doing to him. It's not worth your life because these men do not want people to know what they have done with you, and they will kill you to keep people from knowing that. Unfortunately for Mr. Robinson, he was sentenced to three life terms without parole. He's never getting out of prison. He is a he's a goner. You feel me? And uh, now everybody knows. So the, the, the thing he did to try to hide it, now everybody knows. It's just not worth it. Guys, Fool with who fools with you willingly. That is okay living in their truth. That's the best way to go. Because these men who are not comfortable with themselves, they will allow you to do something to them. They may do something to you. But at the end of the day, when they leave and they have it on their minds and they're not comfortable with themselves to say, Oh my God, I just did this. And now it's like, oh my God, how do I get rid of it? And I feel so bad for Mr. Blair Keys, who, and Armand Matthews, who are still alive and have lost their friends. You know, my heart goes out. Guys, make sure you are being careful when you're meeting up and things like that, you know, because it can go bad. And this is a story where it went bad, so... That's it, guys. I, again, I appreciate you guys um, listening, being here. Because you could be anywhere in the world, but you right here chopping it up with me. And I'm digging that. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that way when I drop new content, you'll be the first to get it. Also, I want to know your opinions. Drop it in the comments. Do you think that this three life term was well deserved? What do you think about this? Let me know. Peace out. Yeah, I love that OG in my switcher. I'ma roll it up, so bring a lighter with you. Got the top roll back when I'm riding with you. Bubble gum, yum, yum, pineapple, berry rum. I love that bubble, it's just in my switch. I'ma roll it up, so bring a light on.